I'm Nick Thurman. I'm a kitsch painter. Today we're going to talk about the pleasures of painting. We got a delightful Q&A. What's my favorite and least favorite part about being a painter? My favorite is that I get this grand challenge. I get to work on painting. It's really a lifelong sort of journey to become a master. So I really enjoy that. I like trying to improve and having to work hard in order to do that. The thing I don't like about painting, uh, you know, I'm not really sure that's, that's quite difficult. I just uh, really enjoy the process. Love the smell of turpentine in the morning. How do you find models as a classical painter? This is a good question. So one of the biggest challenges there is really just finding people who are going to be reliable. They're going to show up. They're going to really be there for you through the whole painting process because it might take many sessions actually there with the live model in order to get to a finished result. The most reliable models are going to be other painters. Otherwise, friends and family are really great models. Usually people who are especially interested in painting are the best because they have a sort of dedication and they understand what's going on to some degree. You should use yourself as a model. The self-portrait is a great way to practice because you have the easiest, most reliable model possible. Anytime you want to paint, you can model for yourself and you're going to be able to get a lot of practice and a lot of time in without needing to worry about making that a burden for your model. A lot of people want to know how you get started painting. And it may seem like it's a little bit complicated, like you need to buy a lot of expensive supplies, but really you can get started very simply. The biggest things I recommend is that you practice using a drawing book and Conte crayons. Those are really great. They're the most similar to painting. It's going to force you to work on a lot of the fundamentals. The other thing is to just start painting with whatever oil colors you do have. I know some of the nicer oil colors can become very expensive, but you can use some of the cheaper brands or find good alternatives without needing to spend a lot of money. Some of my favorite oil colors are really cheap. Some of my favorite paint brushes are just from the hardware store and they're meant for house painting. And you can always work on cheaper, lower quality canvases in the beginning if you just need to practice, you need to get your skills up. The single biggest thing I would recommend that you upgrade is actually lights. Lights are the absolute most important for making sure that you're going to have a good experience painting and that you're going to be able to really see the volume on your model. Even just one studio softbox light can really make a dramatic difference in the quality of the lighting in your room. If you're interested in the lights that I have here in my studio, then feel free to check the link in the description. Otherwise, you need to practice a lot. You should start where you are. Start with the things you have available and start with inspiration, paintings that you actually like and you enjoy and try to imitate those. Where do I find inspiration? In the masters, of course. I have lots of painting books around me that I keep close by so that I can look at them for inspiration when it comes to painting techniques, when it comes to compositions and structure, as well as storytelling. So I always keep books close by. I have my studio completely full. The absolute best kind that you can buy are these big scale books and they have large paintings. So that's what I'm looking for is whatever has the highest quality of these illustrations and paintings. This is my all time favorite book right here. This is Crime and Refuge by Odd Nerdrum. This is just packed full of Odd Nerdrum paintings and his compositions. It's really good quality reproduction. These paintings are just really great references for anything you want to work on. So this is my absolute favorite book. If there's any book I would recommend or any book I would personally like to have in my studio, it's this one right here. Did I go to art school? Absolutely not. And if you want to know why, I have a whole video just explaining the sort of different options of art schools, what I think the pros and cons are, and why I'm not interested in that. What I chose to do after high school is to actually go to the Nerdrum School, which I think is the single best school for classical painting or the single best way to learn classical painting. The main principle, the main idea is that you have a master and you're trying to replicate what they're doing to imitate them and to practice in the same way. I think the most important foundation when you're starting off is actually to have a strong philosophy. I have a video about the most common beginner painting mistakes and how to fix those problems. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. I want to cover some common questions about my palette. 
So one of the first things that everybody always asks is what kind of paint I use. So this is the Apelles palette. It's a four color palette. It has white, black, yellow, and red. And I am somewhat particular about the actual colors that I use. There's a couple of reasons why. First of all, you wanna make sure your oil colors are as quick drying as possible. You don't want to buy the student brand that's slow drying because that will just ruin the process. My favorite colors are Titanium White by Winton or Becker's, Old Holland Yellow Brown, or alternatively, Yellow Ochre by Winton, Senelier Chinese Red Vermilion, and for the black, either Old Holland Mars Black or Gamblin Mars Black. Either way, you gotta make sure that black is the Mars Black. That's crucial for this palette. Any color that you find on the human body, you can get by just mixing these colors together and blending them. So that's why it's so powerful to just have this simplified Apelles palette. It really makes it easy to achieve harmony. What kind of medium do I use? And do I use marble dust to make my paint more thick? My medium is always going to consist of linseed oil and terp, and that's really all I'm going to use. I'm gonna use that quite sparingly. Most of the time, I'm going to be using pretty much just the pure oil colors. Even in the thick impasto areas, I find that that really leads to the best results. It makes it easy. I don't have to worry about any kind of problems coming with my medium. And if I want to build up thick impasto, then I can do that by just adding more paint to my brush and just putting it on thickly. I'm going to paraphrase this one. Narrative work requires a lot of time and dedication. So how are you supposed to pay the bills? There is absolutely no hiding that it's hard to pay the bills with classical painting or with just painting in general. Many people struggle. That's why you have this sort of cliche of the starving artist. I'm a firm believer that if you make something really great, then you're going to be all right. You're going to be able to sell your paintings and you're going to be able to make a successful career out of it. It's also a sort of investment. If you do build up your skills and you really become a master, you really put yourself in that position where you can make such well-crafted paintings, then you're going to be able to pay it off over time. I mean, it's not, it's not something that's going to happen quickly. You should be prepared to have an income somewhere else or to make money somewhere else. This is not the sort of field you go into or the sort of craft that you pursue if your goal is to just make money. If you want even more in-depth videos, you want the ability to ask me questions directly, or you want to have any kind of one-on-one -on -one lessons, then consider becoming a member of Kitchdown. You can join my Patreon community. I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.